Great Performances presents a series of dramas about the private lives of theater people. You can sign for them. Sides. Sir? All right, I send will. them up and I'll sign for them. Who's on the house phone, Joe? Nothing, only some flowers. Just what we need. Oh, Joe, it's the back door. Hello, Miss Julie Cavendish? Will you wait a minute, please? Joe, it's the back door. Right. Now, what was that again? Dinner at Mrs. Sherwin, November 26th at se 7? Well, I'll tell her, but Miss Cavendish has got to be in the theater before 8. She always eats her dinner at 6.30. All right. I will. These are for Miss Julie. Take them up to her room. There's more. Uh-huh. Oh. Have you seen Miss Julie's mix? They're in the library. Yeah. Where? In the library. Joe, and the telephone. Oh, let it ring, Mr. Cavendish. Yeah. Well, where'd you say? In the library, Joe. Have you got a pencil? Have I got a pencil? <laughs> Oh, well, she can't right now. I should think in about uh, an hour or so. Oh, no. All right. I'll tell her. Oh, what's that? Oh, I guess those flowers. Oh, here, give me those. You take this telegram up to Miss Julie's room. Oh, Joe, answer the front door. Uh, uh ma'am, hmm? take this up to Miss Julie's room, will you? Oh, sure. Ah, oh, good morning, Joe, my boy. Good morning, Mr. Dean. Well, well, well. How's the family? Oh, they're not down yet, sir. Oh? It's hardly noon yet. I was up over a full hour ago, sitting up exercises, cold bath. Is Miss Julie awake? Oh, yes. Her and the trainer have been exercising for half an hour. I want very much to talk to her before we're interrupted. Why, you're hungry, sir. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, you might bring me a cup of coffee. I wasn't permitted to finish my breakfast this morning, what with one thing and another. Is uh, my sister up? Mrs. Cavendish doesn't sleep so well lately, sir. Wide awake at 9.30 every morning. Well, 
She's getting along in years. Trouble is, she won't give in. Good morning, Mrs. Dean. Is oh my Mr. God. Dean here? Uh, yes, ma'am, he just got here. <laughs> That's funny. You're getting here just a minute after Mr. Dean. He got here just a minute ago himself. Well, I'll tell Miss Julie you're both here. And furthermore, Herbert Dean, if you think you can shut me up by sneaking off to this family of yours... Sneaking, yours, you... my good woman? I believe I am privileged to walk out of my own home and call on my niece and my sister without asking your formal permission. If you think I'm going to stand by and see another woman play that part, you're oh, mighty mistaken. Oh, for heaven's sake, Kitty, I've been waiting ten years to get a play me. like this. That part was not made for you. you There's no you way you can play a 16-year-old. Good morning, Mrs. Dean, Mr. Dean. Oh, you're both out bright and early this morning. Hello. Mr. Anthony Cavendish? Oh, he lives here when he's home, but he's in Hollywood. Who is it, please? The graphic. You don't know anything. I don't know anything. The graphic. What in the world has Tony been up to now? <laughs> a Cavendish could do no wrong. Joe told Miss Julie you wanted to see her in a hurry. Ah. In a hurry, hmm? Before I could get here. Please, Kitty, I don't want to talk about it anymore. No! I'm not allowed to say a word. But you sent a script over for Julie to read last night. Julie and that sister of yours. I have never done a play without consulting Fanny and Julie. Maybe that's why you never have a hit. Well, I'll have one this time. I can see myself in every line of it. Every gesture. But as for you, my dear Kitty, you are no longer capable of... Are you by any chance telling me I'm too old? Oh, my dear. Well, I suppose I'm not a good enough actress. <laughs> I'm as good an actress as your precious Julie, and I'm better than that sister of yours ever was. My dear Kitty, please do not embarrass me by comparing yourself with Julie Cavendish or with my sister, the greatest Juliet of her day. Cavendish, Cavendish. I've had the royal family Cavendished up to me for 12 years. God, but I'm sick of them. You are sick of the Cavendishes? You? And what were you when I married you? I was understudying in the Garden of Allah. You were an off-stage noise. Here you are, Mr. Dean. Oh. Nice hot pot of coffee, hot buttered toast. You, Joe, my boy. Oh, Joe, I feel a little faint. Perhaps if I forced myself to swallow a mouthful of coffee. And a little toast? Oh, the teeniest sliver. Well, perhaps I ought to try to eat an egg. Yes, ma'am, I'd try. Soft boiled? I think coddled with just a thin curl of bacon. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Joe, I might uh, have an egg while you're about it uh, with a little bacon. Chicken livers, anything. Joe, I've got to have some lunch. Hello. Hello. Want some lunch, Perry? Not a chance. If I'm going to dress and get back here, I've got to blow. <laughs> this is Perry Stewart. Yes. Oh, I guess you've met my Uncle oh, Bert. Oh, And Aunt Kitty. <laughs> Been riding. Oh, it was marvelous. <laughs> now, Gwen, I'm going to be back here at half past two, and you've got to be ready. One thing Mother's fussy about is people being on time. I'll be sitting on the curb. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks actresses are temperamental or something. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye. Perry. Joe, I'm starving. Yes, Miss Gwen. I've been up since half past seven. Half past what? <laughs> I think he's awfully good looking, Gwen. What's the function this afternoon? It sounds formal. Oh, no. Perry's mother is giving a tea for me. That's all. Uh, oh, Gwen, you might remind your mother that I'm waiting. Also your grandmother. Sure. Incidentally, so am I. No more morning rides after this weekend, eh, Gwen, my child? Rehearsals, rehearsals. I'm afraid so. Well, you ought to be very proud, my dear, at your age, to be appearing with your mother. Quite an event. Quite an event in the theater. Yes, my dear, you are about to enter into your great inheritance, to come before the public as the member of a distinguished family. It's not a trust to be taken lightly, my dear. Remember, not only will all of us be watching, but your gifted ancestors as well. That speech needs cutting, Bertie. How are you, baby? Fine. Did you have a nice ride? Glorious! The sun over the frost! Oh, spare me. <laughs> Bertie. Fanny. Well, what are you two love birds doing round at the break of day? <laughs> Isn't that hat a little of ingenue, Kitty? Your devoted brother is calling one of his family conclaves. Oh, it sounds very repulsive. Julie not down yet. Well, that prize fighter's up there, I suppose. When I was Julie's age, I didn't need any prize fighters to keep my figure. You could span my waist with your two hands. I like a nice womanly figure myself. You ought to be very happy. 
Fanny, you're looking splendid. I was never better in my life. I'm going into rehearsal. Soon as Wolf can pick a cast. Now, now, Fanny, you've been ill for nearly a whole year. Well, what of it? What's a year out of a lifetime? I played 53 years without ever missing a performance. Except when Tony was born. And surely when Julie was born. No, sir. She knew her business better than that. Julie was born during Holy Week. Fanny, you haven't a new play, have you? Well, who said anything about a new play? I'm reviving Castlemaine. Taking it on the road. Well, you're mad. Well, I'm not like you, Bertie. I've been a trooper all my life, and I'm going to go on trooping. But those dreadful small-town hotels sleeping in Pullmans. I did it before there were any Pullmans. Many's the time I've sat up all night with Julie sound asleep on one side and Tony generally yelling his head off on the other. But all that belongs to the past, Fanny. I was Fanny Cavendish then, just as I am now. When the bills said Aubrey and Fanny Cavendish, people knew what they were going to see. You had to know how to act when you went on the stage in those days. You had your method. We of the younger school have ours. Ah, youth, youth. <laughs> well, with you going back this season, Fanny, that means the whole family will be on the boards. <laughs> well, except for Tony, of course, and you can't call pictures acting. Mm. I uh, sent over the manuscript of my new play. Did you read it? Well, only the first act. I, I didn't dare read the second. I was afraid you might be playing two parts at once. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Mrs. Dean. Ah, food. Good morning, Mr. Wolf. Good morning, my girl. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Oscar. Oh, hello, Bert. Calories, kitty, calories. I didn't have a bite of breakfast. Fanny, my girl, how are Darling, you? Darling, what brings you round at this hour? You, my dear Fanny. Now, now, now. The heartlessness of this coquette, the best years of my life I've given her. Oscar, I... Where's your gifted daughter? I knew it. My lunch ready? I'm dying. Hello there, young lady. How is the child actress? Oscar, here at the first pale crack of dawn. Why, you're good for nothing actors. You can sleep till noon. Your poor old manager has done a day's work for you already. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Oh, Joe, isn't it time for my eggnog? Yes, Mrs. Cavendish, they're beating it up. Do you people realize there are families in this town who sit down a dining room all at the same time and eat a meal together? Quaint. Ah, you're your old self this morning, huh, Fanny? My old self, Wolf, and ready to go back to work. Oscar, I tried to find you all day yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> a crazy day. This is the last theater I ever built. Where the devil is Julie? She can't stay in bed all day. Julie, I'm in a hurry. Oscar, I have finally found the play. All right, all right. You're a fine actor, Bert, but that last opus you sent me, oi, boy. There's the script. I'll keep it in mind. What a play. Richness, characterizations, verisimilitude. I'll read it anyway. <laughs> Is that piano in the library as bad as this? Bertie, what's the name of this masterpiece? The Conqueror. Uh-huh. What's that? I don't know. Table for one, Joe, not too near the music. How do you make our matinee days, Julie? By being the star, Oscar. They wait for me. Very good entrance, Julie. <laughs> Dear little mother, wouldn't you like to go up and come down again? <laughs> Have a nice ride, Gwen. Oh, Lord, don't you look terrible. Yes, mother, I'm going right up and change. No, wait. Hello, I bring tidings. Guess what? Tidings? Well, what? a CLD package, Miss Julie, $39. $39? $39? Such a strange sum. Who has $39? <laughs> Oscar! Oh, let me have it, will you? That makes how much do I owe you now? Enough. First, let me tell you why I came, then I go right out. No, 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 don't go. We're going to need you. Well, am I sent up? Yes, I think you've built up a good enough suspense. <laughs> it is dear little brother Tony again. Oh. I knew it. What has he done now, that bum? Plenty is my guess. Yes, well, his telegram is rather sketchy, but as nearly as I can make out, I gather that he has killed somebody. Anybody we know? <laughs> 
Pay no attention to possible accounts of Deming incident. Injuries not fatal. Takes more than that to kill a lousy movie director. I arrive New York Saturday. California police have no authority outside state. On no condition talk to reporters. Zeta Zadak on this train, but no trouble so far as I'm locked in the drawing room. Love to all of you. He was a dirty hound anyhow, Tony. No oh, good old Tony. <laughs> what did I tell you? Yes, well, it lacks a certain clarity, doesn't it? California police? But well, what does it mean? Yes, what's this? What's this? <laughs> you know, Tony. <laughs> what's it all about? Oh, Who's no. this Zeta Zeta? Ah, uh, hold it. Possible accounts of Deming incident. Deming is his director. Arrived New York Saturday. That's tomorrow. Zeta Zadak on this train. She's that Polish hussy. A fine business. Now, what's she doing on the train? Uh, no condition talk to reporters. Reporters? Have there been any reporters? Before you were down, the graphic. The graphic? Well, whatever we've done, we've always kept out of the tabloids. Well, who kept you out, I'd like to know. Wolf. Yes, well, here's another chance for you. Such a fuss because Tony punched some director. I'm sure to be late. Now, wait a minute. This is not as bad as it seems. The way I figure went like this. The fella says something Tony doesn't like, Tony knocks him down, of course. And to keep from answering a lot of questions about it, he gets on this train. Yes, with the picture half finished, naturally. Omaha he sent us from. That means he got to Chicago this morning. Tomorrow morning, you'll be just one happy family. Yes, now we've got to keep the reporters off him. They've been laying for him ever since that Mauritania thing. Mm. I must say, I don't blame them. Yes, he never should have shoved that reporter overboard. A big mistake. Yes, but they're sure to swarm him at the station, and he'll start to smash cameras. Mm. Whoop! That poor boy. I tell you how I fix it. He don't come into Grand Central, he gets off at 125th Street. But he doesn't stop there. It will tomorrow for one minute. I get him off the train, I bring him here before the newspapers know about it. He stays quiet for a couple of weeks. If they find out about it, he's got a nervous collapse and can't see anybody. Oh, Oscar, you are wonderful. <laughs> but who is this zany woman? What is she doing on the train? Yes, well, Oscar, tell Mother the facts of life. Satisfied now? Your boy ain't no danger? You're the manager. Good. My dear Julie, I want you and Gwen to come down to my office at 3 o'clock sharp. What for? Who do you think came under the Mauritania last who? night? St. John Throckmorton. Oh, who's he? Who's he? Only the fellow who wrote Julie's new play, that's all. Oh, the author. Well, send him back. I'd love to meet him. Julie, do that for me, huh? The less you have to do with authors, the better. That's right. Make it harder. Remember, this fellow's come over all the way from England. <laughs> An English author? But if he landed last night, won't he be lecturing this afternoon? <laughs> now, if you comedians will keep still for a minute, I'll tell you what it is. This is a serious fella. Monocle, gardenia, spats, everything. And he wants to read his play aloud to the entire company. Oh, I never heard of anything so idiotic in all my life. Oh, Paulie. What are you that for? Julie, jolly him along. Tell him how good he is. What do you say? To hell with him. But, Oscar, I can't this afternoon. I just can't. Tomorrow you got a matinee. Monday you start rehearsing. If you only knew how impressed he is about having you, Gwen, his first play, he knows all about you, everything you've been in. All of you. Really? You don't say. Julie. Ah, uh, never mind. Next time you ask me for a favor, I do it anyway. But what are you doing this afternoon that's so important? Well, I... I do it, busy as I am. Oh, pay no attention to her, Oscar. I'll see that she's there. Mother, you do not understand. Oscar has done a lot of things for you. Oh, all right, Oscar. You win. At three o'clock, enter Julie Cavendish. Laughing. Ah, the girl. <laughs> now, look. It's, uh, it's 2.20. I want you and Gwen to leave here a quarter to three sharp. That's the way to talk. Goodbye, everybody. Oscar, you're not what going. Is, what is it? The play. Oh, the play. All right, I'll take it with me. Now, there are one or two I'll scenes where well, I could use a bit of energy, Oscar, again. but of course the I'm important sorry, thing is getting ready now. first. I have a lot you of are going to. I mean, Remember about I'll me, aren't you, Oscar? I think I know There is isn't one of those parts I couldn't play brilliantly if I just had a chance to read the script. Kitty, for God's sake. I'm on to you, all right. You're afraid I'll give too good a performance. Kitty, I have been a star for years, Kitty. You want and to I didn't like There's no job for anybody. anybody. Can I oh, for heaven's I sake, you two. I've been a star, you've been a star. Get out. Oh, I can't stand it. Get out, get out, get out. Now, Julie Cavendish, what was this big renunciation scene? I can't this afternoon. I can't. Gilbert's back. 
Gilbert. Gil Marshall? He's in New York. He sent me a note and some flowers. You see, it would have been rather nice to have had the afternoon off. So he's come back to New York to spend his millions. What is it they call him? The South American Diamond King? No, Emerald's mother. Much nicer. Emeralds or diamonds. When I think that if it hadn't been for me, you'd have gone off to South America, given up your career. Everything. Yes, I wonder what he's like now. He may have grown very charming. South America, millions. Perhaps a little touch of grey here. It sounds rather romantic. No more romantic now than it was 19 years ago. Ah, oh, what a siege that was. Yes, and what a demon you were. Well, I had to be. You thought just because he looked serious and didn't say very much that he was thinking profound thoughts. <laughs> well, I knew he was just trying to think of something to say. <laughs> but he certainly behaved like a mother in a melodrama. Well, I told him, I said, here's a girl that's going to have fame and fortune, the whole world spread before her. Do you think that you can make up to her for all that you'd be robbing her of? Yes, yes, uh, Mother, I know. He went away and we both lived happily ever after. How I ever got you where you are today is more than I know. You were always on the point of running off with some young squirt. Yes, but I never did, so it couldn't have been so serious. Well, it was serious enough for them. <laughs> that poor little Earl of Pembroke that went off to Africa. <laughs> and that Boston fellow that shot himself. He was cleaning his gun. Well, they were always cleaning their guns. And then you finally went and married Rex Talbot. Oh, Mother. Out of the whole crowd of them, why did I ever marry Rex? God knows. I always said I wouldn't marry an actor. He wasn't even a good actor. <laughs> what was it about him, Mother? Rex Talbot was a brilliant loafer. <laughs> Then he had the most exquisite manners. He was the sort of man who could kiss your hand without looking silly. Yes. I suppose that's what he was always doing when I needed him. <laughs> oh, that's one thing you must admit about Gil, Mother. He would have been dependable. Yes, but when you're 18, you don't marry a man because he's dependable. Yes, but when you're a little older, you, you begin to think that maybe... What? No. What's that? Oh, no, no, it's all right. Now, don't be alarmed, mm -hmm. but... But I am curious to see him again. I had it all staged so beautifully, too. I was going to wear my rose beige and a hat with a brim and be dignified and wistful and girlish with all. Mm, well, you can put on that act for him just as well after the show tonight. It's been 19 years. What's well, a couple of hours more? No. Midnight isn't as kind to me as it used to be. <laughs> oh, I'm just vain enough to want to look my best. Oh, you are, are you? Yes, I want to look young and fresh and radiant. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody seen my tan bag? I left it down here Where? somewhere. Where was it? Was it this afternoon that you were going to Westchester with Perry? Yes. Oh, my darling, I'm afraid you can't go. Why not? We've got to go right down to Oscar's office, I promise. But, Mother, I'm sorry. It's, it's all a play reading by Throckmorton. Oscar made an awful fuss about it, you know, a favor to him. I've never met his mother. She's giving this tea just for me. Yes, but you can do it just as well as I can. I'm only doing it for Oscar. Oh, but it can be some other time. No, it can't. I've been all over it, and there isn't any other time. It's got to be this afternoon. Why didn't you tell me so? Oh, no, you knew I had this date. Oh, I'm sorry, Gwen. But I'm giving up something just as important as you and more. So. I'll be rehearsing all the time, and then I'll be now, listen, if you think that it's like going that to be any forever, fun for me to sit and hear the play I'll be an old red. woman. America, sweetheart. <laughs> did you miss your baby boy? <laughs> Tony, Tony, will you explain this trick entrance? How did you get here? I'll tell you about it in a minute. First, I need some money. I'm going to need a lot of money. Uh, let me see. You get twenty dollars. He drove me in from Mineola. Uh, let me see. Uh, now, listen, you guys. If those reporters ask you, I didn't come in here. You never seen me before in your life. You got that? Yes, sir. Okay, Judy, let him have the money, will you? Oh, Joe, attend to it. My bag's on the dresser. I'll see to it. Oh, Tony. Darling. Tony, you're on. What have you done to your arm? Is it a serious injury? Oh, it's nothing. I 
I hit him too hard, that's all. Yes, but how did it start in the first place? Oh. Della! I'm starved. I haven't had a bite to eat in 12 hours. Bring me everything you've got. Yes, sir. Now, first, I've got to have a bath. Everybody come upstairs while I take a bath. Oh, Tony, will you listen to me? How did you get here? <laughs> How did you get here today? You were in Omaha yesterday. I flew, of course. I came by aeroplane from Chicago. Yeah, aeroplane? Tony. You couldn't take a train. They're watching all the trains. I've got to lay low in this apartment till I sail. Sail? Sail? Where? Well, for Europe, of course, on the Aquitania. Oh, God. I hate pictures. Well, what happened out there, Tony? How did you get into this oh, fight? This alleged director. He had it coming to him from the moment we started to shoot. He put his girl in this picture. When she got stuck on me, he got sore. Well, the blow-off came when we were on location doing a desert scene. This alleged director picks the worst camel in the pack and said to me, you ride that one. I said, the hell I will. He said, who is directing this picture? I said, you're directing the picture. You're not directing me. I'm through with it. And you can take that to remember me by. Oh, but Tony, unless you killed him, I don't see so, what all the fuss is. Yeah. And as you're going, you are not to me. I have been to take the and you can ask for me for this you. I will send him to take this You have a to take this You have a Get your hat on. I'll be right down. Who is this train? woman, this Zickery Zachary creature. Oh, come on, get your bonnet off. Oh, Perry. Uh, what's the matter? I can't go. What are you talking about? I can't go with you, Perry. I've got to go to Wolf's office and hear the play read. Isn't that damn? You're joking. <laughs> what play? What the play? That Mother and I are doing. Oh, my good God, Gwen, you've read that a thousand times. You read it to me. Well, I know, but this is different. The author's going to read it. Well, let him, the silly ass. Oh, now, what do you care? Now, Perry, <laughs> this is part of my job, and it's important. Important to hear some idiot read a play that you've read again and again? But it's more than that. It's a ceremony. You know, Gwen, this isn't the first time that you've done this to me. Perry, please don't be unreasonable. You know, this is all just because of the new play. Yeah, but there'll always be a new play. Won't there? Oh, I realize it's inconvenient sometimes. But what are we going to do about it, Gwen? Well, if I can't go, I can't. What are we headed for? Now, that's what I'd like to know. How's it all going to work out? W what is there to work out? You marry the person that you'd rather be with than anyone else in the world. But your work will just begin when mine is all over with. You'll be having dinner at 6, and I'll probably not even be home. By midnight, you're all keyed up and ready to start out, but I've got to be at work in the morning. These things adjust themselves. I'd do anything in the world for you, Gwen. I'd die for you, but I can't be one of those husbands hanging around dressing rooms. But what am I going to do every night? See the show? But you wouldn't want me to be one of those wives, would you? Bridge and household and babies. Well, why not? Because I can't do that sort of thing any more than you can do the other. I'm an actress, Perry. An actress. Now, what is there to it when it's all over? Well, get your name up in electric lights. And a fuse blows out, and where are you? I won't let you belittle my work. It's just as important as yours. I suppose the world would fall to pieces if you didn't sell a hundred shares of consolidated whatnot for ten cents more than somebody paid for you it. You can't compare business with acting. Is that so? I can give you the names of actors and actresses of 300 years ago. Dozens of them. Name me two 17th century stockbrokers. All right. I'll give up my work. Oh, that'll be dandy. And trail along behind you carrying your Pekingese, huh? <laughs> well, not me. It is not a Pekingese. It's like a bad dream. I can't go, Perry. Oh, yes. Well... I suppose I'd better get started, of course, if I'm going to get there. Goodbye. If you don't try persuasion, 
every now and again instead of knocking people down right away. Oh, good heavens. Are you ready, Gwen? Yeah, I think I'll be running along, too. Oh, very good. Oh. Heavens, Gwen, get your things on. What have you been doing? Stay on the stage where you belong. Then you wouldn't get mixed up with all this riffraff. Yes, there's a car downstairs. Drop me the lambs, Julie. You're late, aren't you, Lackey? You'll be worried. Gwen, will you get your things on? Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, darling. Mm. Where do you want me to drop you, Bertie? See you later, Tony. Bye, sis. Gwen, what the devil is the matter with you? Why don't you come? I'm not coming. Oh, no, Gwen. Don't start that all over again. It's so silly. I'm not going, do you understand? I'm not ever going. I'm not going to act in it at all. Oh, for heaven's don't sake. My dear, What's the matter Gwen. with her? I don't just mean I'm not going to be in this play. I'm not going to be in any play. Huh. My dear. Oh, I don't know. My offspring's gone mad. I mean it. I'm through with the stage. I'm never going to act again. Don't go into pictures. I don't know what you're talking about. She does mean it. Never act again while the child's sick. Please, I've made up my mind and all of you put together can't stop me. I'm through with the stage and I'll tell you why if you want to know. I'm not going to have it mess up my whole life. But what do you mean well, mess up your whole life? This? Do you know what he did? He walked right out of the room. Well, if you think I'm going to give him up for a miserable little stage career just because we've always done it... Darling, you... We never see each other. You're not going to ruin my life. But what do you mean, ruin your life? What kind of talk is this? Ain't you ashamed of yourself? I'm going to marry Terry Stewart and be a regular person. And nothing you can say is going to stop me. I've never heard such silly rot in all my life. Who is Perry Stewart? Oh, I don't know what you are talking about. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I'm sick of all this. I'm sick of being a Cavendish. I want to be a human being. But you are a Cavendish. But of course you are. But I don't want to be. But you've got to be. What do you think we've worked for all these years? You can't do this to us. My God. What anybody wouldn't give for your chance. It's absurd. Why, you could be the greatest of them all. Aubrey and Fanny Cavendish have just been stepping stones for you. What's that? What's that? Oh, Mother, please. I'll be a stepping stone for nobody. And as for Aubrey Cavendish, there's nobody since his day that can touch him. Just one moment. I still believe that my Macbeth stands as the greatest interpretation of its day and age. Upstart, you to tell him how good you are. You no, I am pretty Mention good. yourself and Aubrey Cavendish oh. in one and the same breath. Fanny. Aubrey Cavendish was an artist. Oh. He wouldn't have had you for his dresser. Roll for yeah. roll, Fanny. What I'm a much better actor than Aubrey Cavendish. Don't want your opinion. Oh. No. You so oh. 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 just stay out of it. This is purely yeah. a family matter. Listen to them. That's what I mean. And why would a man say to me, I'm going to tell him stop talking. No, this is no concern of her. I've seen it. I've seen it on the head of the other side. I want out my talent and hard work. Oh, all of it. You are there and hard work. You are so just intellectual. You are so hard. I may not be interested. Ah, lunch. I've been a terrible man. I've been a terrible man.
Odella, what time is it? Near six, I guess. Miss Julie's late. Said she'd be home right after the matinee. Of course, it's Saturday. And with all those young girls crowding backstage, they're taking up her time. More likely that passport of Tony's that's holding her up. Europe. Got to go to Europe. One of those reporters tried getting up the service elevator a little while ago, but they got him. Is that crowd still hanging about down there in the wet snow? Certainly is a mob, all no. right. Joe says it's a bigger crowd than the time Mr. Tony got his first divorce. Ah! A hit! A hit! Out Hit! Leon McDermott! And damned be him! The first cries! Hold! Enough! Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh, I wish Mr. Tony would stop that fencing. Poor Miss Gwen feeling the way she does. Tony, stop that racket! He's carved his way through every room in the house this afternoon. I have to lock the door of my bathroom. Ah! He gives ground. Black Jennifer knows the dark fate that is soon to overtake him. Came the dawn, and yet they battle grimly upon the ancient parapet. Ha ha! Oh, oh, who is it? Ah, he begs for mercy. Too late. Expect no mercy from Antony the Elegant. Ah, the immortal Passado, the Punto Reverso, the High. Ah, oh. thou cur. Thou didst not know when thou didst hash a flagon of burgundy from this hand. Thou didst run smack up against the niftiest little swordsman in all of Gascony. Thou cur, prepare to meet thy end. Prince, call upon the Lord. I skirmish, I faint a bit, I lunge. I keep my word. And the last line, a hit. Come, my pretty wench, a kiss. Or have I not won thee fairly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you all right, Mac? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be up in a minute. Gee. Uh. <laughs> I used to have seen your father hold off eight of them. <laughs> what a swordsman. What an actor. He'd hurl one head first down the stairway, fling another one over the banister. Quick as a wink, he'd whirl and catch one creeping up behind him. Faint, tarry, thrust and exit. That scene alone took a full bottle of liniment every week. <laughs> Those were the days, Fanny. Ah, uh, those were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> Say, where the devil is Julie? Yeah, what time is it anyway? It's late. Well, perhaps the weather's holding her up. She rings down to quarter to five. Oh, is she getting me my passport? Or isn't she? I've got to get out of here. I can't sail without a passport. She ought to know oh, that. Oh, now you'll get it. Wolf is helping her. You'll get it all yes, right. Yes, but when? The boat sails at midnight. I've got to get aboard early if I'm going to dodge that mob down there. I ought to crack a couple of them in the jaw. That's what I ought to do. You've done enough jaw cracking. How are you going to get past them anyway, even if Julie does get you the passport? Oh, the hell with them. I've got to get on that boat tonight. Oh, if Julie hasn't got my passport. Oh, no, she hasn't. Who says you've got to get on the boat? What for? Well, there are a million reasons. I feel like it. <laughs> oh, I want to get so far away from Hollywood and sunshine. I never want to hear the word camera again or stage either. You can have it. I'm through. Through? You've been saying that ever since little Lord Fauntleroy. Yeah, well, I mean it this time. Oh, Mother. Oh, Mother, you, if you give me two years, you know, with my violin in Munich under Asher, you'll see what the stage means to me. See, I could be... I could be a great musician or... You know, I might go away to India with Krishnamurti and study Hindu philosophy. It's the only real thing in the world. You wear just one garment, a long white robe, and you eat just one food. Rice. Mm. That'll be restful. Oh, the stage Why I would rather spend ten minutes in the cathedral at Shah. Now, don't think you're fooling me about why you want to go to Europe. Cathedrals, violins, rice. It's this Dago woman you're running away from. Oh. Else why was she on the train with you? Well, I'm not afraid of her. I gave her the slip in Chicago. All the same. That's why you're going to Europe. Don't you lie to me, Tony oh, Cavendish. Well, what if I am? Only I'm not afraid of well, her. Then what is it? Well, well... You see, it's this uh, goddamn process server she's got after me. Uh, what goddamn process server? 
it's, well, it's a breach of promise. What? A breach of promise suit? Breach of promise? She wants two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand. If she claps that paper on me, I won't be able to sail. Well, why wasn't I told about this? I was too young to know, I suppose. Oh, Fanny, darling. Keep away from me. Two hundred thousand for breach of promise. Assault and battery on this director, another hundred thousand, breaking your contract with the picture company. Oh, well, I suppose half a million will cover it. Well, it's worth it, I can tell you. Oh, my God. Oh, that sunshine. Well, what on earth did you promise this, this movie actress that's worth two hundred thousand dollars? Oh, well, you see, she... Uh, well, she claims that she's got some um, uh, letters. I didn't want her in the first place. She was Deming's girl. That's why I got sore. Well, who is she anyway? Where did she come from? Zeta Zadak, mother? Ah. She's a Pole. Mm. What's that? Damn your dear public, Tony! Did you get it? The entire population of New York is standing on the doorstep howling for a glimpse of America's former screen lover. In the meantime, they take what fortune sends, and it just so happened to be me. Julie, the passport. Did you get the passport? Oh, what a dandy day this has been. I had to get out at the corner. You don't dare drive up. And my dear Mrs. Cavendish, have you ever played to an audience made up entirely of sea lions? They came in, wet to the knees, and never did dry off. They spent their first act taking their galoshes off, and the last act putting them on, you know. I looked out once during the last act, and I couldn't see a face. And cough! You'd think they had a cheerleader. Lincoln couldn't have held them with the Gettysburg address. How is grandmother? Is she feeling any better? Oh, well, look here. Oh, Julie! Tony, will you be quiet? Oh, what is she doing? Has she eaten anything? No, darling, she wouldn't even take her tea. Oh, well, I'll go up to her. Dinner at the usual time, Miss Julie. No, hold it a while, Della, please. Mr. Cartwright called, and Mrs. Blair's dinner has been postponed till a week from Sunday. Yes, not now, Della, please. Oh, yes, a ham shop called. Your dress is all ready. Dress be damned! The boat sails at midnight. What have you done about my passport? Tony, my love, Wolf is bringing it. Oh, he is? Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Oh, thank God. He's oh. been pulling all sorts of strings. He's been in and out of my dressing room all afternoon. Everybody's been in and out of my dressing room all afternoon. Compared to my dressing room, Grand Central Terminal has been a rustic retreat. And all on account of you, my baby. Sob sisters and reporters and process servers. Oh, I'm going up to Gwen. Now, Gwen's all right. Lie down and take it easy. You've another show to play. Uh, Julie, how soon do you think he's going to be here? Oh, I don't know. Right away. And he's bringing you the money. Oh. They kept your reservation and I have paid for it. But you neglected to tell me that you were roughing it across in the royal suite. Well, I cannot travel like a stowaway. I had a battleship for all I care, but remember, I am a working girl. What do you do with all your money, anyhow? You go out to Hollywood with a billion dollar contract, and you buy a big plaster palace for 150,000, an Isotta Frascini for 20,000, and a Hispanic Suiza for 25, and a camp in the Sierras for another 50. Good God, you were sunk a quarter of a million before they ever turned a crank on you, and the moment they start to take a picture, you knock out the director and quit. It'll all blow over in a month. That's why I'm going away. Yes, but why does it have to be Europe? What are you going to do when you get there? He's going to eat rice and play the violin. I am going to bathe in the pure beauty of Athens. I'm going to lose myself in the black forests of Bavaria. Switched your bookings. <laughs> well, I don't care where I go. Any place where it rains all the time. Oh, well, go to Pango Pango for all I care. But attend to your own passport. I've got my art to look after. What's that? Keep calm. They can't get up here. Well, you think they, we ought to open it? You've got to go out to catch the boat, haven't you? They can't back the Aquitania up to the door. I'll get out all right when the time comes. Who's out there? It's Herbert Dean! Oh, come right in, Mr. Dean. You ought to be arrested, those fellows pushing me around like that. You didn't tell him I was here, did you? Of course not, but I hope, Tony, that your next director proves to be more congenial to you. Uh -huh. There isn't going to be any next director, old socks. 
Joe, listen, I've got to pack and get out of here. Come on upstairs. Now listen, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to sneak down and get me three taxis, all alike, and have them lined up at the front door. Oh, uh, what the devil is he up to now? Oh, Mother will tell you. I'm going up to Gwen. Oh, no, wait, wait. Well, I'm uh, going to sit by the fire if you want to talk to me. Oh, uh, no, no uh, Julie, I, I want to talk to you. In the first place, where is Oscar? I gave him my play to read yesterday, and I haven't been able to find him since. Isn't that funny? He's coming here, Bert. Nail him. Oh, good. Oh, Ju Julie, just uh, one more thing. Oh, but can it be some other time? I've simply got to go up and see Gwen. No, 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 please. I've never needed you worse than I do now. Please. Why? What is it, Bert? What's the matter? Well, you see, Julie, for the last five or six years, I haven't, uh, well, things haven't been exactly... Uh, it's youth. Youth. They write all the new plays for young whippersnappers. I, I keep in condition, try to. But it's impossible to get a good massage nowadays. Oh, but your figure's grand, uh, Yes, well, not bad, but... Uh, but you see, Julie, I can't go around and sit in offices. They've got to come to me. I mean, I sit and wait for letters. I, I rush to the telephone, think each time that... And before you know it, it's months and... Months. What am I to do? Oh, something may come along any minute. That's just it. It already has. What? This play, The Conqueror. Oh. Oh, yes, I know. I read it, Bert. And yes. it, it struck me then that if instead of trying, well... If you would be willing to play one of those attractive, yes. slightly grade parts. Uh, oh, I can get around that all right. Pink lights and I don't look over 35. Here's the real problem, Julie. It's the girl. I mean, she's got to be young, beautiful, a vision. Kitty will ruin it. She'll ruin the first real chance I've had in years. Yes, but you know I can't do anything with her. Bert. Yes, but you can. Oh, please say you will. Will what? Give her that part in your play. I mean, you know, the, the, the colonel's wife. Oh, but Bert! It wouldn't hurt your play. Oh, Julie, you're so admired and so popular. Julie, we've always stood together, the family. Oh. Please let me go and tell Kitty that you suggested it. Oh, but It'll Bert. mean I'm sure to have a hit. It'll also mean I can pay you back all the money I owe you. You and... Well, different people. Oh, and, and Julie, just... Uh, could you spare me another 500? Just a few... a few weeks. I'll try and dig it up, Bert. Why am I telling this, Julie? Oh, no, I can't right now, Della. I've got to go up and see Gwen. It's getting late. I... I don't know what to say about Kitty Bird. But you will do it. Oh, good. Good? Hell, it's perfect. What an off she's got down there. It certainly is terrible, all right. And what's more, it's bad publicity. Oh, Oscar. Oh, hello, Bert. This is fortunate. Miss Julie will be right down. Now, Oscar, tell me how the play impressed you. Uh, I knew you'd be crazy about it. Now, I'll go and start lining up a cast and be around to see you tomorrow uh, uh, about what time, say? Uh, I don't know. Any time, any time. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we can start rehearsals in about uh, ten days. Woo -woo. Not so fast. That's a pretty heavy show you got there. Take a pile of money to get it on. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Fourteen scenes, Grand Central Station, Garden of Eden. Just a few drapes. Court of King Solomon. Battle of Waterloo. I think Bertie has retired and doesn't know it. Uh, I wish they were all like you, Fanny. What do you think? Going to be able to start a troupe again after the holidays? Well, I tried to tell you yesterday, but you were so busy with your English playwrights. Uh, if I had to pick one actress out of that whole caboodle, you know who it would be. Come on, tell me. You're going to be able to start again, sure enough. You can dust off the castle main scenery, and I just assume you book me right to the coast. Ah, the girl. No foolishness about you. 
You're the girl that's 2800 in Boys City, Idaho, catches the 614 the next morning for Pocatello. I did 2900 in Boise City. Chairs in the aisle, eh? <laughs> well, she's promised to get dressed and come down. That's more than she's done all day. What kind of performance are you going to give tonight with all this hallabaloo? Oh, things will be a little better once Tony goes. Oh, it's so restful to think that at midnight, he'll be rounding Sandy Hook. Uh, that, that, that's what I came to talk to you about. What? It don't go so quick. You mean you can't get it? Oh, my God. Now, uh, hold on. I didn't say I can't exactly. There seems to be some sort of monkey business going on. Maybe they found out something you don't want to leave. Oscar. Another 24 hours with this caged lunatic, and you can order straight jackets for two. He's impossible to live with. And those terrible people on the street. Now, now, now. Did Oscar ever fail you? We'll get it all right. I hope. Anyway, here's the money. That's that much. How much? Oh, what difference does it make, Mother? He has to have it. Oh, Oscar, I owe you a ghastly lot of money, don't I? How much? Julie, the money you welcome to. What it oughtn't to be that you gotta come to me like this. You make as much money as any woman in the business. What the devil do you do with all that money? Well, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean, do with it? Well, what does anybody do with it? Well, for argument's sake, let me ask you once. You have made $60,000 since you opened this play, and that says nothing about the others. In the past 20 years, I'll bet you made a million dollars. And how much have you actually got? Well, uh, let me see. Um, where's my bag? I've got three dollars in that, and Della owes me 75 cents, and... No, <laughs> I don't know. It just goes. Uh, well, I stayed longer than I intended. Bye, darling. All right. Now, I'll let you know the minute I see these fellas, all right? Oscar, you are an angel. Would it interest you to know that you are adored by the most beautiful actress on the American stage? Nope. No. <laughs> my Galahad. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Wolf. Oh, I hope he gets that passport. I just don't dare tell Tony there's any doubt about it. Let's just hope he gets it, that's all. Aren't you coming down, dear? Oh, I wish you would. Who is this Mr. What's-His-Name of hers, anyway? He didn't seem to me like anything but an average young man. Oh, well, they're all average young men. Well, speaking of average, how's Mr. Gilbert Marshall? Have you seen him yet? Uh, no. I suppose when he telephoned yesterday and they told him I was out, he just thought that I didn't want to see him, that's all. Oh, well, it's probably just as well. It was a long time ago, and he's, he's probably bald and fat and talks about conferences. <laughs> uh, uh, Gwen! I don't mean to act like a prima donna. I just feel like hell, that's all. I know you do, dear, and I hate to see you unhappy like this, but you have so little sense. Oh, now, Gwen. Oh, Mother, I love him so. Well, there's nothing to cry about, dear. Well, you can love him and marry him too, can't you? Well, of course you can, Gwen, and live happily ever after. Only why you should think you have to give up the stage to do it is more than I can figure out. Yes, it's very hard for us to realize that you wouldn't want to keep on, Gwen. Your mother and I both got married, but we didn't give up more important things to do it. There isn't anything more important. Fiddlesticks. Marriage isn't a career. It's an incident. Aubrey Cavendish and I were married in the Church of St. Mary Redcliffe in Bristol, England, just before the matinee. The wedding supper was served on the stage of the Theatre Royal between the matinee and the night performance. We played um, She Stoops to Conquer in the afternoon, and a scrap of paper was the night bill. Oh, I know, Grandma, but that's got nothing to do with me. You married an actor, and so did you. You lived the same sort of lives. Oh, but I knew some quite nice men who weren't actors. Didn't I, Fanny? Yes, yes, you did. Oh, there were lots of times when I thought that being a wife and a mother was all that mattered in the world. But then I would learn all over again that that wasn't enough for me. I should think not. Earthquakes and cyclones, fire and flood, and somehow you still give the show. Oh, I know it says in the contract that you stop for acts of God, but I can't remember that I ever did. No, nor I, nor your grandfather. Nobody knew what a sick man Aubrey Cavendish was those last months, but he played a full season of 35 weeks. 
dropped dead on the stage of Macaulay's in Louisville just two minutes after the curtain fell on Saturday night the week we closed. And not only that, but he waited to take four calls. I know, but I'm just not like that, that's all. Oh, but you think you're not, but you are, Gwen. Now, listen, marry him if you love him, but don't give up everything to do it. The time might come when you would hate him for it. Hmm? Hate Perry? You just don't know what you're talking about. Gwen, do you think it's going to be any fun for me to have the MCU stepping out, acting with me in my play, and for all I know, walking away with it? Oh, you'll be so fresh and such a surprise, and it'll be your night, and I'll be very proud and happy, of course. Of course. And they'll say that's her daughter, but ten years from now, oh, it'll be, oh, that's her mother. Oh, I'll never be half the actress you are. Oh, Gwen. If I could only make you realize that the thrill you get from doing your own work is bigger than any other single thing in the whole world. Oh, I know there's love, but, but you can be the most fortunate person in the world, Gwen. You can have both. But for God's sake, don't make the mistake of giving up one for the other. No, no, child. Work! Acting isn't anything. What's acting compared well, to... Well, it's everything. It's work and play and meat and drink. They'll tell you it isn't your fancy friends, but that's a lie, and they know it's a lie. They'd give their ears to be in your place. Don't you make any mistake about that. that You enter. That's all that's kept me alive these two years. If you weren't down there for me, I wouldn't want to live. I couldn't live you down there for me, carrying on, carrying on, going on, going on. Oh, Mother! Mother, what is it? What's the matter? Joe! Tony, tell her, quick! I didn't mean it. It's all right. I will do it. I will. Yes, Miss Julie? No. Water, uh, spirits of ammonia, quick. What's the matter? What's happened? We were talking, she fainted. Well, do something. Just don't stand there. Where oh, is everybody? Oh, my fault. Mother, mother, mother it's me, Tony. I, I didn't mean it. I will do it. I will. There, of course I will. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You're, you're all right now, aren't you, Mother? Yes, yes, I... <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> well, there's... There's nothing the matter with me. I, I think I'll just go and lie down for a little bit. Yes, Joe. Joe, yeah. fill a hot water bottle, will you? And Ella, turn the bed down. Yes, there Mr. Joe. we go. Mm. You okay? Right. There we are. Slowly, Tony, slowly. Do you think she ought to be walking upstairs? You won't let me carry her. Of course not. <laughs> well, what is it, Mother? Do you feel faint again? No, it's nothing. I, I just want to rest for a second, that's all. <laughs> there. Oh. It's no use, is it? 
It's no use fooling myself. I, I, I'm through. I, I'll never go back again. I, <laughs> it's, it's finished. Uh, finished. Spirits of ammonia. Yes, bring the whole thing. Yes, now then. Oh, no, you're not here. Yeah, come on. Now this is going to pick you up. Yes, right? let me give it to her. Come on. Just a little time. Hey, why don't you open a window? No! No, I have to If go. you don't stop fussing about me, I should get up again right away. Well, just you dare, Fanny Candace. Just you dare. It's that stuff's no good. Now, uh, uh, shrink a whisky. Now, that's what she needs. Drink it, down. Oh, what a bad oh, girl oh, you are. Is Miss Cavendish in? Miss Julie Cavendish? Yes, sir. Would you say Mr. Gilbert Marshall, please? Well, I'll see if... I'll ask her if she can sit with me. Is something the matter? Is Miss Cavendish... Oh, it's Mrs. Cavendish, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I'd better not wait. Oh, she's all right now. Just a kind of fainting spell. Look, I don't want to intrude. Just say I'll telephone. Well, I'm sure Miss Julie will be right down. Well... Please, sir, just be seated. Don't you bed in the middle of the day? Yeah. Don't go. Julie. Uh, Julie, can I help? What's wrong? No, no, no. It's nothing. It's, it's, I'm just, uh... Oh, Julie, I am so sorry. Is she very ill? No, no, it's nothing. It's, she's all right. She's perfectly all right. I, I don't know why. It's just been such a hellish day. Oh, Gil. Gil, you're still sane, aren't you? And solid and reliable and sure. I hope so. How nice. I meant to be so ravishing for our first meeting. I, I had it all planned. Um, let me go up and make another entrance, will you? <laughs> I'll say you. It's really you, Gil, after all these years. And you'll say... I'll say... Oh, uh, do you want me to... Oh, she's fine, Miss Julie. Mr. Tony's telling her stories about Hollywood to quiet her. <laughs> Look, Julie, I know I'm in the way. No, 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 I Gil, don't you... go. This is the first peaceful moment I've had today. Well, no wonder with that mob downstairs. Yeah, you've read the papers, of course. <laughs> oh, pardon me, Miss Julie. It's 7.30. I thought perhaps you know that oh, you would... Oh, that's all right, Della. I'll let you know. Later. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you haven't have changed, changed a bit. bit. <laughs> Uh, you know, Julie, I haven't gone to see you once in all these years. No. Well, I think I would have felt it if you had been out front, and, and you never were. No, but uh, South America's a long way off. Oh, but I kept track of you. I took the New York Times oh, and the... Oh, but you haven't been exactly hidden from the public gaze, Gil. What was it you found down there? Radium lying around <laughs> in chunks. Not radium, platinum. Uh, oh, oh, well... You've got millions and millions. Well, I've done pretty well. No, but say, you're certainly top of the heap in your line. Oh, the zenith. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse oh, me. Sure. Hello? Oh, Oscar. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, I'm sure you did, but oh, Oscar. Well, of course, if you can't, there's nothing to be, it's no use. Yes, yes, I know it is. I'm leaving right away. Oh, don't worry, I'll give a swell performance. Who was that? Wolf? Oh, um, Tony. Uh, how is Mother? All right? She's asleep. Who was that on the phone? Wolf, wasn't it? Yes. Now, Tony, I don't want you to hit the ceiling. Oh, oh my God. Oh, he hasn't got it. Oh. But it's not so vital. You haven't done anything so terrible. Oh, what are you talking about? You'll find out how vital it is. My God! Oh, don't be so woman... this, Tony. Uh, what does it do to you? You talk like somebody in a melodrama. Now, for goodness sake, calm down and shut up. Oh, Gil. Gil, this is my brother, Tony. What can she do to me? I'll tell you what you want. Quiet! This is Gilbert Marshall, my brother, Tony. Charmed. What the hell kind of a jam do you think I'm in anyway? Why do you think I flew all the way in from California? The ride? I've got to get out of here. Zadax in town. 
don't know what that means. You don't know that pole cat where I have seen her pick up a... She's a killer. She'd do anything. She'd just as soon shoot you as look at you. Now, if you don't want to do anything to help me, all right. You're one hell of a sister. I am just your brother. Why should you bother about me? But I'm telling you, if they get me, I'll be all over the front page. And so will you. So will Gwen. So will the whole damn family. If that's what you want, it's what you're going to get. I am very pleased to have met you, Mr. Gilson. Is he always like that? Oh, no. That is the brighter side. <laughs> but what is it he wants? He wants to sail tonight on the Aquitania, and we can't get him a passport. A passport? He's putting you through all this? For... Yes. What you've seen is practically the rest hour. Look here, Julie. Uh, when is it Tony wants to sail? Midnight. The Aquitania. Why? Do you mean that you know Bowling someone? Bowling Green, 10516, please. Look, uh, how soon can I get down there? Well, right away, I guess. Uh, hello, John. Let me speak to Moran. Oh, Gil. Gil. Oh, do you mean that you can get it? Don't you know there isn't anything in the world that I wouldn't... <laughs> hello? Well, if I thought you needed me, Julie, I'd go to the ends of the... Hello, Moran. This is Marshall. Now, get this. I want an emergency passport, Aquitania, tonight. That's right. I'll give you all the details when I see you. Right. Oh, Gil! I'll meet Tony, smuggle him on board, Moran will do the rest. <laughs> Tony! Tony! Oh, that's, that's wonderful of you, Gil. Why, why, you are one of those strong, silent oh. men, after all. <laughs> Tony! Tony, hurry up! Get ready! We've got it! What? You mean the passport? <laughs> Oh, Julie, Julie, you're a swell sister. <laughs> Joe, Joe! Now, Tony, you understand you to go right down there. Gil will meet you on the dock and he will have the passport. Right, yes, sir, Joe. Listen, we're going to leave in five minutes. You got everything ready? Yes, sir, it will be. All right, go to it. Oh, you're a grand sister. I knew I could count on you. Old reliable. Ah. Much obliged, old chap. Who is that, anyway? Won't you sit down? Why do you stand for all this? Oh, Tony doesn't mean anything. He's always like that. Yes, but you're a successful actress, head of your profession. You're the one that they should be running around for. And look here, everybody's dumping their troubles on you. Oh, but it isn't always like this. You know, Julie, the reason that I went away was so that you could go ahead and be an actress. Well, you've got everything you went after. Are you happy? No. Oh, of course you're not, Julie. Why, you, you ought to have everything done for you. Done for you by someone who loves you. Oh, Gil, don't, don't say things that'll make us both... Don't you know what you ought to be doing instead of this? Why, why, you ought to be in a big country house somewhere with a garden around it and trees. Oh, Julie, if you could only see the place I've got in England, an old stone house with a rose garden that's famous. <laughs> it's a beautiful place, Julie, and there it stands, empty. Oh, Gil. Oh, we could go any place you like. Cairo, Samaritz, anywhere you say. Don't you know that's the way you ought to be living? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Julie, what fools we've been. What fools. No, Gil. Gil, please. Let me, let me think a minute. Let me get my breath. You've had too long to think. No, 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 please. I'm not quite sure what's happened. I, I can't think very clearly. I'll tell you what's happened. Something that should have happened 20 years ago. Oh, well, perhaps if... Maybe. Oh, Gil. Oh, Gil. I think you'd better go now. I think you'd better go. It's late. All right. Must I? Oh, please. I... I can't take you to the theatre. No, no. I've got to get Tony away on that boat. I wouldn't be able to give a performance. Uh, I mean... I just need one minute alone. It'll only be for a few hours this time. You'll call for me at the theatre? At 11? At 11. I'll be waiting. That'll be wonderful. Goodbye, Julie. Goodbye! Joe! Joe! Where the hell is that bastard? Oh, will you be quiet? You wake mother. Oh, God damn it, I've got to get packed and get out of here. Tony, will you shut oh, up? Julie. Julie, you've got 
to be going. Oh, Della, you Della, where the hell, the hell is Joe? Joe? You, you, you won't even come out of here. I'm not making any racket. It is you that is making all the racket. You know how embarrassing it is. This terrible racket. Well, it's not that bad. 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 It's not Mother, did you call me? Yes, Gwen. I want you to look after Mother. I'm terribly late. Now, Madalena, me. Gwen, take her other arm. I don't need any oh, arm, Oh, yes, darling. but you do, though. You shouldn't be up at all. Now then, Gwen is going to look after you. There. And Della, if you want me, you're to telephone the box office, you understand, and ask for Mr. Friedman, and I'll come home right after the performance. No. Yes, yes, I will, so do. <laughs> now then. Oh, Gwen. Gwen, you've been crying. No, Mother. <laughs> Miss Julie, it's a quarter of eight. Yes, yes, I know, I know. I've got to go through that terrible crowd downstairs again. How Tony's ever going to manage it, I don't know. Tony! Are you coming? All right! Oh. Go! Pat! The end of a perfect day, thank God. Now, Joe, keep an eye on him, no matter what happens. Oh, what does he want all that luggage for? Oh, now, Tony! Don't, don't stop anything rough for heaven's sake. Oh, but sure to know him in those clothes. Yes. <laughs> Take care of your sinus and keep out of rush for heaven's sake. Why do you have to come up with all this love? Come on, mine is the Tony. Come on. Tony, aren't you going to say goodbye? Tony. Tony, aren't you going to stop him? No, he, he's never got home before. Wait, didn't even look at me. Didn't even speak to me. Yes, but Mother, he's all right. Now, you wouldn't want him to stop. Oh, oh, never mind, I... Grandma. It'll be all right. Yes, my darling. Are you feeling better now? I have I... simply got to go to the theater. The door was open. Who's that, Tony? Listen, Julie Cavendish, I've got something to say to you. Oh. What? Hello, everybody! Farewell, appearance. <laughs> hey, you like it? Huh? Hey, it's good on me, isn't it? Huh? Tony! What are you going to do? I'm going to go to the boat, of course. Like Sure. They'll go out and jump in their taxi. The crowd will swarm around them, give them a little run up Fifth Avenue. I go out and get in my taxi. Ten minutes later, I'm on the dock. Voila. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Mother. Now the open sea, the salt spray, the Arctic wind. I'm on my way. Mm. Remember, Julie, it's the Guarantee Trust Bank. And now I want to ask you a question. Oh, my God. Did you offer me that part of your own accord, or did Bert put you up to it? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, it isn't possible. You! You count on me with your miserable little... Your part, Bert's part. After all that I've... Oh, it's too... Oh, my God. Mother, don't... What's, oh, What's going on? Oh, what? what else? Come on, what else? Come on, what else? Oh, Perry, Perry, for God's sake, take her away from all this. Take her away before it's too late. Take her away where she'll never hear the word stage again. Take her away! Julie, Julie! No! I'm not going to marry him. Not going to marry him? Not going to marry him? I'm not going to marry him and spoil his life. Gwen! No, no, no! no. Oh, no, no, you don't. If you think I'm going to let you throw away your life before this, so the 19 years from now, you could be standing here where I am, a mad woman in the family of maniacs. Money for this one, jobs for that one, rehearsals and readings and tickets or God knows where. I'm damned if you're going to. You are going to marry Perry Stewart. No! Oh, no. yes, yes, you are. You're going to do what I didn't do. They told me I had to be a Cavendish. Oh, yes, yes, you did. Well, you are not going to be one. You are going to marry him now. Tonight, uh, tomorrow, and I'm going to be there with you and stand up beside you and cry for happiness and wish to God it was me! <laughs> and why not? I'm not dead yet. I still have some of my life left, and I'm going to live it to suit me. You've all had your turn. Who's crazy now? I can walk out and nobody can stop me. What nonsense. Oh, you're mad. You don't believe it? All right, I'll show you. I am going to marry 
Gilbert Marshall and go to Egypt and Venice and Constantinople. And what do you know about that? Cavernish! To hell with Cavernish! I'm never going to act again. I'm never going to stand on another stage as long as I live. I'm never going inside the theater. I'm never going to play. It's eight o'clock! Oh, my God. Funding for this program is provided by a grant from Exxon Corporation, by this station and other public television stations. Miss Julie, is Miss Gwen bringing her baby over this evening? Oh, yes. I wonder what Mr. Marshall will say to Miss Gwen's baby. He knows about him, doesn't he? Well, I wrote him, Della. Let's hope he approves. Well, he better approve. I never saw a grander baby in all my life. Two months old and you'd think he was twice that. Miss Julie, are you going to live down there in South America when you marry Mr. Marshall? Oh, Mr. Marshall doesn't live there, Della. The last time he was there for six months. That's living down, ain't it? He won't be there much next year. Excuse me, Miss Julie, but see, I don't know if you're going to keep this apartment or what. Miss Gwen with her own place, you going traveling? I wouldn't worry about that, Della. We, we may not give up the apartment after all. Well, who's going to live in it then? Mrs. Cavendish is going touring on the road. Yes, yes, I know. Della... Mother, Mother isn't going to be able to travel again. What? Oh, my God. You... Oh. Ah, Romeo, Romeo. <laughs> Speaking of Romeo, where is your young man? You'd have thought he'd come bounding straight up from the dock. After being away so long. Oh, he'll be here presently. Oh, well, if he said he'd come, he'll come. He's what they call steady going. Regular habits. Look at those two dozen American beauties that have been arriving every morning. Like the milk. Well, I think it was very sweet of him to leave an order like that. Yes, well, if there's one way to take romance out of roses, it's knowing you're going to get them every day. <laughs> But the very qualities he's got are the ones I need. I've had enough of temperamental people. I'll bet he's got your honeymoon worked out in algebra. Oh. Arrive Constantinople, January 12th. Arrive Cairo, February 24th. He will tell you that the next Sahara sunset is at 6.49, and it'll better be. And while you're sitting on the hill in Fiesole, he will know to the minute when you will be in, in Copenhagen. 
least it'll be restful. After 20 years of practically checking my own trunk. Well, if you really wanted to marry him, why didn't you do it a year ago? You know very well why I didn't. There was Wolf with a new production on his hands and Gwen dropping out of it. I had to agree to play the New York run. Where are you going on your wedding trip? You made up your mind yet? No, no, it depends upon Gil a good deal. I'm not keen on faraway places. Well, since when? Why, it's been nothing but Baghdad and Venice and the Vale of Kashmir every day for the past year. Yes, well, I love the sound of the names, but they're awfully far away. Well, if you're going to marry him at all, you might as well see the world. You'll need it. I just thought that I'd like to be around and in case you needed me. You or Gwen. What for? Well, Gwen certainly doesn't need you married and through with the stage. Yes, dear. And as for me, while you are drifting down the Nile, I shall be playing Ogden, Utah, and doing very nicely. I sold out there in 1924. Yes, now, now look here, Mother. <clears throat> I've been thinking it over. You're going on this tour, I mean, and I'd ever so much rather you wouldn't go. What? But you haven't been well, and, and I wouldn't have any peace if I had to think of you galloping around those terrible towns. Tulsa, Albuquerque, Oklahoma City. Well, I'm tougher than you are. When I quit, it'll be for the same reason Aubrey did and no other. Yes, well, I still think you oughtn't to go. And besides, there's Gwen. She's awfully young, and, and I'd feel so much happier if you were here to keep an eye on What's her. What's the matter with her husband? And then there's this place. Della was just asking me if you were going to give it up. And, and then there's Bert. <laughs> and Kitty. <laughs> so you see, if you stay here, all comfortable, it'll mean that I shall have a place to come back to when I'm in New York. Oh, I see. So as to make you comfortable, I'm to give up my entire career. No, no, no. It's not me. It's you. Now, you must admit, it would be a hard Good trip. Good afternoon, Joe. Good afternoon, um, Mr. Dean. Hmm. Isn't it a marvelous day? Well, here we are. Oh, Bertie. Benny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just thought we'd uh, drop around and see how you all were. Why? Hello, Bertie. Oh, what a stunning tea gown, Julie. Oh, do you like it? Oh, yes. I think the color's a little trying. <laughs> well, uh, Marshall's boat get in. I see he's due. Yes, it did. And he will be here very soon. Oh, oh. won't that be nice? We'll be here to greet him. Oh, well, that'll be lovely. It's a queer fellow, Marshall, always talking about the Panama Canal. <laughs> well, Fanny, are you uh, still determined to go out into the hinterland? Why not? No, no reason. Just be careful, that's all. You're not as young as you once were. Who is? <laughs> <laughs> Won't be many more chances for family gatherings, will there, Mother Cavendish? You won't be keeping this great big place once the family breaks up. I was not aware that the Cavendish family is breaking up. Well, with you on the road and Julie God knows where and Gwen married, I don't see that you'll have much use for it. You can't count on Tony. Looks as if he's going to stay in Europe forever. Just what are your plans, Fanny? I mean, what about all this stuff? What are you going to do with everything? Go to the storehouse, I suppose. Aubrey up there, along with the rest of it. Fortunately, we are held together by something more than tables and chairs. <laughs> It occurred to me this morning, remember I was saying to you, Bertie, that aside from Fanny on the road, it'll be Bert and I who will be carrying on the family tradition. Thank you for including me, anyway. Has Bert told you what we're planning to do? No, what? What is it, Bertie? Well, I was going to keep it as a little surprise, but... What? Well, what are you going to do? It seems that the vaudeville people are very anxious to elevate the tone of their entertainment. Vaudeville? Well, why not? Why not? They don't want good plays anymore. They proved that by the way they received The Conqueror. Finest play of my career, and what happened? It closed. Well, anyway, here is an opportunity to reach a wide public, to create an audience for the finer things. We're getting $1,800 a week together. Yes, and 20 weeks right here in New York, and around it. And they thought up a very neat little act for us. It's, a, it's, it's very amusing and, and, and very human. Here's the plot. Oh, yes, do tell us. I'm all of a Twitter. Well, I play this sort of bachelor chap, you know, 35 or so, well, very rich, who's had an unhappy love affair that he tells the butler about. And ever since then, you've been a woman hater. Yes. 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 Then comes this letter from Australia, you see. It seems that an old college friend of mine has died out there, and it was his last wish that I should take care of his little girl, you know, be her guardian. But the letter is delayed in transit, and it happens to arrive just before the little girl herself. You read it? 
No. Oh. No. Well, anyway, suddenly there's this great commotion outside. You know, the automobile horns and so on and so on. The door opens, and instead of the little child we were expecting, there stands an exquisite young girl of 18. Kitty. Uh, now, just a minute, Fanny. I'm not through. Oh, yes, you are. And then... I come in with my little dog, Rags, that my father gave me, and I'm sort of a pathetic creature. You don't say. Yes. Go, the whole family in. Oh, Oscar. 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 Don't ask me, you renegade. A lot you care about Oscar. What do you keep thinking about is this hooses. The boat gets in today. Couldn't sink or anything. No, it's your own fault, Oscar. Why didn't you marry me? Marry you? It's bad enough to manage you. <laughs> Oscar. Oh, hello, Bert. Fanny, my girl, how are you? Good as ever? I'm... <laughs> now, don't you back out on me like the rest of these loafers. Well, it's about time you concentrated on me. I want a brand new play for next season. Here, you hear that? There's a trooper for you. Yes, Oscar, I, I want to talk to you. What? What's going on? And now I want to tell you about my part. Mm -hmm. Did we tell you it's called The Bachelor's Baby? Oh. Well, my part is just as important as Bert's because well, I am the baby. Well, what's the matter? It's... About Fanny. Yeah? What's up? She can't go on this tour. Why not? Oh, I don't know how you're going to do it, Oscar, but somehow or other you've got to stop her from going without her knowing it. What are you trying to tell me, Julie? She's through, Oscar. What? She can't go on this tour. What do you mean? She's got to have absolute peace and quiet, the least strain or exertion. Fanny? She can... Never play again. She may never even leave this house. Let me... Let me realize this. Fanny Cavendish in there, it's over. I don't know why I'm so... I know she's been sick a long time. She's not young anymore. But she never seemed sick. Always going on, busy, making plans, sweeping us all along. Doesn't seem possible. Della! Della! Mind like a rabbit. Don't you two ever talk about anything but business? Oh, Della, what happened to the gingerbread? We tried to cut it, but it crumbled. Oh, well, bring it in anyway. Don't you two want your tea? Yes, Mother. We're coming right away. Oh, Kitty has reached the love interest. Mother Cavendish, come Don't on. call me Mother Cavendish. Oh, you love I it. I will come not on. tolerate it, I tell you, Oscar. What are we going to tell her, Oscar? How are we going to manage it? i tell you how I fix it. First, I tell her on account of booking trouble we can't open just yet. Maybe March instead of January. Then when March comes around, it's a little late in the season. The road ain't so good anymore. Maybe we ought to wait till next year. I guarantee you the way I do it, she won't suspect a thing. Oh, Oscar. What a grand person you are. I wish I could really do something. Thirty-five years we've been together. They don't make him like her anymore. I wish you could have seen her the first time I did, Julie. Her face so young and gay and beautiful. Oh, but so much more than beautiful. And the way she treated me the first time, me, a beginner, a nobody. I went into there, I didn't want to show I was shaking. I came out, I could have been Sir Charles Wyndham. If I could only tell you how much you have meant to all of us. But you wouldn't listen. And you, Julie? What are your plans with all this new still Egypt and India? Oh, no, but what am I to do, Oscar? Gil's got his heart set on the ends of the earth. And I don't dare go far away. Well, tell him the way things stand, what the situation is, after all. Only what are you going to do with yourself all the time? What are you going to do? I don't know. Well, say you're in New York anywhere, you don't have anything to do, what's No, it Oscar, no. I am through with it. Through with it forever. So, you, Gwen, Fanny, 
That ends it. But for you, there's no excuse. I'm getting married, Oscar. That is a pretty good excuse. What do you two talk about when you're alone with this fellow? The theater he says he don't care about. Imagine. Well, there are other things in the world besides the theater. Sure, but not for you. But I want to relax and play around and, and have some fun. Fun? Fun is work. You've had more fun than any woman in America. I tell you, Julie, the theater just beginning in this country. And a fine actress today, there's nothing she can't do. And the finest one of them all that could do the biggest thing of them all, she says she wants to have fun. Oh, but there are lots of actresses, Oscar. And so many good ones. Yeah, good, but not for this play. What play? Julie. A long time ago, when I was a call boy at Daly's Theater for three dollars a week, I made up my mind the theater was a good place to make some money, and so I went into it. Now I've been in it for 40 years and I haven't got a nickel, but this time it's different. I got a play. I'm so crazy to produce it. I don't care how much money I lose on it. Really, Oscar? Who wrote it? A new fella you never heard of. Gunther is his name. A college professor way out in Idaho. You wouldn't believe a college professor could know so much. But what's it about? It doesn't matter. God, what a play. Oh, Oscar. How exciting. Exciting, yes, if I could do it right, but how could I do it? You go on, Gwen go on. Oh, you'll find somebody. You're sure to. Never mind. Go ahead, relax. Relax. I do the play anyway. Not so perfect, maybe, but I do it. I do it because I want to be known as the man who produced this play. Oh, but if it's as good as all that, it would run for years and years, wouldn't it? No, a month, maybe two. That's all I give it. I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't. All right, go ahead, relax. Be a bizarre patroness, but mark my word, you'll come back again. No. No, they don't all come back. Look at Gwen and Tony. He's been away a whole year. You fool! Well, hello, oh, hello, children. Oh, hello, Papa. Oh, never oh, it's ever. Sexy, look, Mark. Hello! <laughs> Yes, don't tell me he's not coming. Oh, yes, Miss Peake's bringing you. Oh, good. Where's Gil? I thought he'd be here. Oh, he'll be here soon. Yeah, Fine. soon enough he'll be here. All the way from South America, he's got to come to ruin my business. <laughs> Perry here couldn't pick a nice girl from Park Avenue someplace. Got to be a Cavendish. How's that? I said, couldn't you marry a good junior league actress instead of my Gwen? Gwen, why don't you tell them about it? See what they think. Tell us what. Well, what is it? Well, they've got this Hungarian play, and they've offered me a simply marvelous part. Who has? The Theater Guild. The Theater Guild? <laughs> what? what? Well. You're going back again. Well. well. Oh, 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 hold it. Let me understand this. You going back on the stage again, is that it? No, it's only for these few weeks, and just because it's a marvelous part. Oh, Perry, it would be such fun. Well, this is news. Well, it's about time. Nice little organization, the Theatre Guild. <laughs> Gosh, Gwen, I don't mind about a few weeks. Not if it's going to make you as happy as all that. Oh, Perry, isn't he a darling? It's really thrilling to think of Gwen going back. Aren't you thrilled, Julie? Hmm? Oh, why, of course. I am. Gwen, darling, I'm very happy. I'm as excited as if I'd never been on the stage before. To tell the truth, I've sort of missed it. When do you open? About a month, I guess. Oh. We go into rehearsals next week. <laughs> well, that'll be an opening night. I should say so. It's really a terrific part. She carries the whole play. I'm scared pink, of course, but if I can do it, it'll put me where I can... <laughs> well, it'll be dandy. Yes. Oh. Won't it? Five weeks, huh? That means you'll be through early in February. Huh? Ah, cocktails! Perry, you don't mind about this, do you? Because if you do, I just won't do it, that's all. Well, of course you'll do it. What do a few weeks matter? Good to be back. Mr. Dean, how are you? <laughs> oh, hello there. How brown you are. Do you think so? How is the little mother? Hello, <laughs> Marshall. Good to see you. Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? Ah, how well you're looking. Oh, I'm fine. How are you, Gil? Just fine, thank Good. you. And how are you? Fine. Well, it's nice to find you all gathered here like this. <laughs> and I'm going to assume it's all in my honor. Well, of course. Indeed, yes. Cocktail, Marshall? Uh, 
No, I don't believe I will. <coughs> I'm used to a different kind of stuff down there. <laughs> I'll take one, Bertie. Ah. Well, how was your trip, Gil? How many knots an hour and all that sort of thing? Oh, the usual. Oh, it was pretty hot when we started out, but it cooled off as we came up north. Mm -hmm. um, but how long does that trip take? It's... Uh, Something like three weeks, isn't it? Eighteen and a half days as a rule with fair weather. Let's see. Uh, yes, eighteen and a half days this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, what a trip. I'd be bored to death, wouldn't you? Why, no, I don't think so. The boat might be full of dashing young Brazilians or one or two of the horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as a matter of fact, there was a very uh, representative crowd on board this time. Uh, some of the biggest planters of South America. Zamaco, Manolo Berlanga. Mm. Oh, oh, Manolo, Manolo Berlanga. Berlanga. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh! Here's something that'll interest you folks. There was a theatrical troupe on board. Oh. Americans, and they'd been down in Buenos Aires trying to play in English. <laughs> uh, ridiculous, of course. Uh, the poor devils didn't have enough to pay their passage. There they were on the dock. <laughs> well, of course, we couldn't see them stranded, so we got together enough to see them home. <laughs> I guess I felt sort of sentimental about them on account of you people. <laughs> oh. Oh, really? Oh, oh, yes. It seems the manager had run off with the money. <laughs> well, you know the way those fellas are. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they turned out to be quite a decent lot. Uh -huh. Oh, a couple of them were married. Lived in Jersey someplace, had a... I, um, uh... I think I shall go and finish my tea. <clears throat> oh, Joe, would you please bring some hot water and another log for the fire? <laughs> Julie, Julie, how I have missed you. Oh, Gil. Oh, Gil, how could you? What? How could you talk like that? Didn't you see how they... Oh, Gil. But, but, oh, what is it? What did I do? No, it's, it's, it's all right. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Oh, Julie, if you just tell me, what was it? No, no. Let's talk about your trip, Gil. Did you have a nice time? Ah, uh, the trip didn't matter. Just meant reaching you. No. Uh, you know, Julie, when you wired me that the play was finally closing, you know what I did? No. I gave everybody on the place a holiday with double pay. Oh, I'm very honored. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a great country, Julie. Yes, it must be. Oh, it's as different from life up here as you can imagine. You are just going to love it. Why, in Cordova, I was in bed every night at 10 o'clock for four months. Up at six, in the saddle, eight hours a day. Really? Oh, Julie, it is so beautiful and, and peaceful and big. On you'll meet real people, none of your, you know, solid, substantial, the kind of people that make a country what it is. Well, uh, take the Zamacos, for instance. Oh, you'll see a lot of them. Oh, he's a Spaniard of the highest type, very big cattleman. And she's a Kansas City girl, Krantz, daughter of Julius Krantz. The meat packer. Oh, Julius. Yeah, Krantz. fine woman. Most entertaining. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, she used to be quite a harpist, you know. No, I didn't. Yeah, it'll really be wonderful for you having her just 30 miles from us. I mean, it'll be company for you while I'm off at the mines. My. Mm hmm. Oh, but for that matter, you'll be perfectly safe alone. <laughs> there are 15 house servants. Most of them have been there for years. Yes, oh. Sebastian, for example. <laughs> you know what he'll do, if necessary? Mm -hmm. He'll sleep on the floor outside your door all night. Oh, no. <laughs> really? I'd ever so much rather he wouldn't. You see, I'd start feeling sorry for him, and first of all, I'd give him my pillow and then my blanket, and then very soon I would be out there and he would be in my bed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Julie, one thing I have found is that for real people, you've got to go to... Oh, there's the baby. Gwen! Oh, I guess this is the baby. Oh, oh Gwen's baby. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's going on here? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Bye, 
holiday. Hey, uh, Joe, you got any beefsteak? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Ah. Oh. Uh, what do you mean by bursting in on us like this? What? Hush, hush, my pretties. I'll tell you all about it in a minute. All the fascinating details. Uh, Gunga, a mem singer, Sala Rohema. Pandira Mulagiva. Singer, Sala Rohema. Galif. Adela, show him where to go, will you? Saved my life, and I was over in India. You know, another moment, and the tiger would have had me. Oh, well, Tony, what do you mean by bursting in on us like this? Why didn't you let us know? Well, I was afraid to let you know. That's why I came by way of Canada. I landed in Canada. Canada? Canada. Well, because well, Albania and Schlesingen were about to declare war on each other. Well, I knew if I got out, she'd marry him, and, well, everything would be all right. But who'd marry whom? Well, it's been in all the papers. Natalia broke off her engagement with Rupert of Schlesingen, and then the Albanian... Now, wait a minute. Natalia! Natalia. Who is Natalia? Well, Natalia's the princess of Albania. Well, you see, she's a nice kid, but... Well, you see, my God, I didn't mean anything serious. You see, it's the trouble with those princesses. Sheltered lives, you dance with them a couple of times. They want to lope with you. Of course, when she broke off her engagement with Rupert and the Prime Minister sent for me... <laughs> oh, I'm beginning I... to understand. You started a European war. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they'll fight. <laughs> no, anyway, that's not why I came back. Now, listen, Oscar, yeah. I was cruising down the Bayerstrasse one night in Konigsberg, and I happened to pass this little theater stuck away in a courtyard, and I got a hunch, and I went in and... Say! Good. Huh? Oh, good. Oh, it's the goddamnedest play I've ever seen in my life, and I bought it. You're to wire them $3,000 tomorrow, American money. Y you bought it. What for? What for? What for? Why, I'm going to... Act in it, of course. But that was marvelous, Tony. You don't mean you don't mean pictures. You mean you're going back on the stage? Of course, don't you? Oh, you bet I do. Oh, well, you see this thing, Oscar. Reinhardt's going to do it in Berlin. Petoyev's got the French right. What's this all about? What's so wonderful? Well, wait a minute. I'll show you. Now, would you move that, please? Uh, thank you very much. Where am I? Oh yes, the devil. Now, uh, this doesn't bowl you over. I'm going to go right back to the Ganges. Now, this is the scene plan. You won't be able to make anything out of this. Now, I'll show you how it works. Now, you, you What's see... What's that there? Oh, well, now, in the first place, you see, they use this new constructivist scenery, grouping the actors on different levels. They play one scene down here mm. and another scene up here. Oh, my God. Isn't that new German oh. stuff? Yes, you don't enter or exit in the ordinary sense. You just... Well, you just slide. Stop. Yes, you, or you get let down by a wire. When they want to show a different scene, they switch off the lights down here, switch them on up there. Out goes that level, in comes this level. It's got every trick of the motion pictures. Plus, another dimension. You see that? Right there where my finger is. And that way, we cut down the overhead 14%. No. Yes. That swings this whole thing around so that the actors become the audience and the audience become the actors. <laughs> Serves them right. <laughs> Oh, it's the damnedest play I've ever seen. And you know, the really, the, the, you know, the really great thing about this play, it takes two nights to do it. Two nights? Tony. I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> Only two? You cuckoo, Tony. You don't understand what this thing is. It's a modern version of the passion play. Uh. And you play what? I play the lead, of course. Huh. Oh, it's, it's pure blank verse. Oh, and the... The incidental music. Now, now listen. Uh, would you move it here? Uh, move that off uh, the, the piano here. Now, there's a sacrificial motif that runs throughout the play. It's going to tear your heart out. Oh, uh, Tony, Tony, Julie, before you start. Yes, just a minute, Tony. Tony, just a minute. Yes. Yes, what is it? If you folks don't mind, I'm sorry, but I've got about an hour's business. Oh, must you go, Gil? Oh, I'll be right back in later. I uh, thought Gwen, we could. I think I'd better be going to oh, see this fellow. Where would later. you like to dine? What? I say, where would you like to dine? Oh, I I don't think I'd better have dinner tonight, Gil, if you don't mind. Tone it back and everything. You understand. Oh, that's all right. I understand. I'll pick you up at the theater at 11. Um, yes. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Now, listen, listen. This is the way this thing goes. When he comes down from the mountain, there's this stunning passage. Huh? Why don't you let me read the play? What? The play by your college professor. Why don't you let me read it? Read it? What for? I just thought I'd like it, that's all. 
to sort of get an idea of the part. I'll send you a manuscript this evening. It's thrilling, Tony. Gives me goose flesh. Very good, very good indeed. It runs right through you. Yeah, but the biggest kick of all comes in the fire worship scene in the eighth act. Eighth act? <sighs> They've got a religious procession here that lasts 12 minutes, and believe me, it's pretty pagan. <laughs> Here oh, look, look, Tony. You've never seen him before. Well, Tony, what do you think? I think he's terrible. Oh, give him to me, Miss Peake. There he is. <laughs> there, there you are, young man. He is cute. Now, do you know who that is? You were named after him. Aubrey Cavendish Stewart. See that you live up to it. Yes, Mother, do you think you ought to hold him? Well, I should hope I could hold a baby. <laughs> there you are. There, there he is. Well, you was a precious baby. Yes, you were. Say, hey, that young fellow's a Cavendish, all right. You can't deny that. By Joe, Fanny, he does look like Aubrey. Yeah. You think you'd be an actor? Why shouldn't he look at him? Here's an idea. Show folks. I am producing a great new play, and in it they talk about a baby all the time. Now, why couldn't there be a scene where they carry on the baby? Yes! <laughs> You're crazy, Wolfie. Perry wouldn't hear of it. Oh, don't be silly, Gwen. He has to start some. But of course he does. Here's to Aubrey Cavendish Stewart. Yes, yes, yes to Aubrey. Aubrey. Yes, here's to the kid. <laughs> to Aubrey Cavendish Stewart. Oh, that won't stop him. He's a Cavendish and he's going to carry on. We always have and we always will. When one drops out, there's always another one to take his place. When one drops out, there will always be another. <laughs> to the future greatest actor of his day, to Aubrey Cavendish the second. To Aubrey, to Aubrey Cavendish, Cavendish the second. The second. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Mother, let me hold him. Yes, <laughs> darling. Yeah. Oh, no, wait a minute. Listen, listen, you people. Yeah, you know, you haven't heard the ballet music? Well, Is that piano it. any better Let's in here? Try it, try it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. Absolutely magnificent. I...
Funding for this program was provided by a grant from Exxon Corporation by this station